Okay, welcome back to my lecture series on theory of probability. Now, in the last class, we have discussed the, some concepts of uh, combinations. Now, almost we are at the end of uh, this topic of permutation and combination. Uh, we are left with one important concept that is the division into groups, which I am going to discuss in today's class. Now, what is this concept of division into groups? Now, uh, you see, let us say we have say p plus q things. Let us say we have p plus q things. Okay. Let us say we have p plus q things in our hand and you have to find the total number of ways that you can select the uh, <coughs> uh, in such a way that you have to divide those p plus q things into two groups, one containing p things and the other containing q things. right? So, the selection has to be made in such a way that p things will be will be in a particular group and q things will be on a different group. So, two groups you have to form that is why it is called division into groups. Now, how you, in how many ways you can do that that is very simple. So, to uh, uh, make the division of two groups of which in one group there will be p things and in the other group there will be q things it is same as selection of say p things or q things from p plus q things. So, if I can select those p things from p plus q things then I am actually making a formation of two groups. Right? So, the number of ways I can do that will be p plus q c p if, if I want to form a group okay, of, uh, of p things and q things two groups right? then I have to make a selection of those I just extract those p things out from the p plus q things and extracting out means selection combination. So, in how many ways you can do that? I can do that in p plus q c p ways and that is by the simple formula it is p plus q factorial. Okay, divided by p factorial into p plus q minus p factorial. So, it turns out to be p plus q factorial q factorial divided by p factorial into q factorial. So, that comes out to be the number of ways that you can divide p plus q things into two groups of which one group contains p things and the other group contains q things. The same thing will will uh, 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 will result if you select or extract out q things from p plus q things because in that case the same result will be obtained the only thing will be it will be p plus q c q and same result will be obtained. So, it will be p plus q uh, q factorial divided by q factorial into p plus q minus q. So, that will be eventually the same thing and, he, and it has to be. So, p plus q factorial by p factorial into q factorial because the number of ways of selecting q things from p plus q things will be same as obviously the number of ways of selecting p things from p plus q things. So, that is the total number of ways which I have written the number of ways by which you can make a division into two groups of one group containing p things other group containing q things out of p plus q things p plus q factorial divided by p factorial into q factorial. Now, this result can be generalized to any number of things. Let us say we have now p plus q plus r things. We are now generalizing it. It is not restricted for two things only. Okay. It can be generalized with two, three things. Let us say we have p plus q plus r things. We have p plus q plus r things. And let us say I want to now divide uh, this p plus q plus r things into three groups of which one group contains p things other group contains q things and the third group contains r things. Now, this is exactly the same way I will be obtaining the logic is same that is I will be selecting this r things from p plus q plus r things or p plus q things from p plus q plus r things. So, ultimately what will happen the result will turn out to be in a very similar way it will be p plus q plus r factorial it will be p plus q plus r factorial divided by p factorial into q factorial into r factorial. So, this will be the total number of ways I can do that total number of ways I can basically uh, make a selection of uh, from p plus q plus r things if I want to divide those p plus q plus r things in such a way that p things will be in one group q things will be in the second group and r things will be in the third group. So, that can again be extended let us say we have one more thing say t things. Okay. So, this can be easily extended for any number of things let us say uh, if we can extend this in this particular manner 
let's say we can write let's say a v plus q plus r dot 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 okay obviously finite i'm talking of okay so in that case uh, it will be like this so it will be p plus q plus r dot dot dot, dot factorial and this will be dot 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 so it will depend on how many things you have so this is a generalization of that above rule so the rule can easily be generalized for any number of things that you might select and want to divide into the so many number of groups three groups four groups five groups that's up to you the result is practically the same that is called division into groups right now uh, we go to some particular cases here okay see the particular case uh, you can see the number of ways uh, in which 3p things now this time 3p things can be divided equally into three distinct groups now this time the condition is a bit different in the previous case we told you that you have to just divide into groups right now they say that divided equally so the equal division has to be made so equal division into three distinct groups now when, when i say, say equal division and when i consider the previous case which i told you for three things let's say we have three things p plus q plus r okay and just now i told you the number of ways of uh, dividing this p plus q plus r things into three uh, three different groups will be p plus q plus r factorial divided by p factorial into q factorial into r factorial right that was the that was the result now since they say that you have to now divide equally equally means these things must be equal so that means for equal cases so if if somehow p becomes equal to q becomes equal to r that because if p becomes equal to q becomes equal to r then the total number of things are equally divided actually can be equally divided so if p becomes equal to q equal to r then the result actually changes automatically and this result this result will now actually change to so q will be replaced by p so it will be p plus p plus p so it's factorial and whole divided by this will be p factorial q is replaced by p and r is also replaced by p so p factorial p factorial p factorial so eventually this becomes 3p factorial divided by p factorial whole cube which is written over there so 3p factorial by p factorial whole cube becomes the number of ways by which you can divide 3p things equally into three distinct groups three distinct groups okay so three three distinct groups you want to divide you have three p things in your hand you just can do it in so many ways three p factorial by p factorial whole cube that is actually coming from the general rule of the division of into groups by putting p equal to q equal to r right fine now the last case <coughs> will be I just change a bit in this case when I want to divide into three groups uh, definitely but the groups are identical in the previous case the groups were not identical the groups were distinct now the groups are identical if the groups are identical then what will happen the result will be more or less same now since the groups are identical you are not able to distinguish between the groups and since you won't be able to distinguish between the three groups which we have formed okay you have to consider an arrangement among themselves and three groups can arrange among themselves in factorial three ways so therefore the total number of ways in that particular situation when you want to divide 3p things equally into three identical groups will be 3p factorial divided by 3 factorial into p factorial whole cube so the only in the previous result only one thing to be considered that is you have to multiply this by 3 factorial so 3 factorial and this will be p factorial whole cube this 3 factorial is coming because the groups are identical the groups are identical identical means you are not able to distinguish between the groups and since we are not able to distinguish between the groups the arrangement among the three groups has to be considered over here otherwise you will get end up in a wrong answer so the, so keep that in mind that when you are trying to divide 3p things equally into three identical groups that factorial three or four identical groups or five identical groups whatever it is or, or let's say n identical groups then that has to be that arrangement has to be considered among themselves that is uh, whatever the number of groups is uh, say number of groups is n so n factorial has to be multiplied in this case is three so it's three factorial to be multiplied 
So that is a very important thing that you must remember. So these two are the two special cases that, that arises from the concept of division of groups, right? Now I'll just end this class with two uh, simple examples where we are actually using this concept of uh, this concept of division into groups, right? Now if you look at the first problem that I've taken, a straightforward problem basically, okay, <coughs> uh, direct application of the division of groups in the problem. Question is in how many ways can 15 things, so we have 15 things in your hand, you have 15 things, okay, 15 things you have in your hand, uh, be divided into three groups, so you have to divide that into three groups, they have, they have asked, so three groups, okay, containing 8, 4 and 3 things respectively, so you have 8, 4 and 3, so if you make the sum of 8 plus 4, 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, fine, there is no, no problem about that. So you have to make a division of these 15 things into three groups, one group containing eight things, the other group containing four things and the third and final group containing three things. Now in how many ways you can do that? So direct application of the division in, into groups problem. So we can easily write the answer uh, to this. So there are 15 things. So we can do that in 15 factorial divided by now eight things will be in one group. So it is divided by eight factorial, okay, four things in the second group. 4 factorial, three, 3 things in on the third and final group, so 3 factorial. So this gives you the total number of ways, total number of ways that you can, <coughs> you can uh, divide these 15 things into 3 groups containing 8, 4 and 3 things respectively. That is coming from the formula of P plus Q plus R, R factorial divided by P factorial and Q factorial into R factorial which I just now told, clear? Now that was a very straightforward problem. Now if we come to the second example, okay, and look and just uh, uh, look at the problem carefully. <coughs> the second problem says that in how many ways can 52 playing cards, you know, playing cards, playing cards, there are 52 cards in number, right, can uh, be placed in four heaps of 13 cards each. That's the first part, the two parts in this question, first part. Second part is in how many ways can they be dealt? out to 4 player giving 13 cards each, right? So <coughs> first, the first part, we will solve the first part first and then we can solve the next part as well, okay? And so there are how many cards? There are 52 cards, so there are 52 playing cards, okay? There are 52 playing cards, fine, okay? Now you have to divide those 52 cards, okay? <coughs> or rather, it's not, uh, yes, it, uh, basically it's division. Division of four, uh, those two cards into four heaps. So four heaps you have to do, okay, four heaps of card, you know. So four heaps, so that means you have to make a division of four, okay, from the 52 cards, okay, of 13 cards, is because 13 fours are 52, we all know. Now in how many ways I can do it? Now when you are making a heap of cards, so you are making four heaps of card, so you are doing it in a very random manner. Now once you are doing heaps of card, are the heaps, are the heaps distinguishable? They are not distinguishable. That means they are identical in nature. The four heaps that you are forming with those third, uh, 52 playing cards are exactly identical in nature. And since they are identical in nature, so the total number of ways by which I can uh, <coughs> break this uh, or divide these 52 cards into four heaps containing 13 cards each will be 52 factorial divided by 13 factorial whole to the power 4, but the most important thing is that the arrangement among the heaps has to be considered. That means factorial 4 has to be multiplied with this. Unless you multiply this factorial 4, you will be getting a wrong answer because the heaps are identical in nature. Heaps are identical. The heaps of cards, heaps of cards are identical. That's the reason that why we have to multiply this by factorial 4, which I just now told you in my second second uh, particular case, right? So the answer is 52 factorial by 4 factorial in 13 factorial whole to the power 4, right? But when they are asking the question, second part, in how many ways can they be dealt out to four player? So there are four player playing a say probably a game of cards, okay, uh, giving 13 cards each. So I'm giving those 13 cards to four players. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing, I'm basically dividing those two uh, cards into four distinct groups, right? 
and those four groups are basically the four players. Now, when there are four players, they are easily distinguishable. I know that I have given 13 cards to him. So I know this group, I know this group, I know this group, which is not possible to find in case of a four heaps of card. And as a result, since the four players are easily distinguishable, they are not identical. So therefore, the total number of ways that I can perform this operation will be 52 factorial by 13 factorial to the power 4. That will be the answer for the second part. For the, for, the, for the second part, the answer will be this. Total number of ways, number of ways will be 52 factorial by 13 factorial to the power 4. Straight away, answer, straight forward answer because in this case, the players are distinguishable. That is, they are not identical, which was not the case in case of heaps. Heaps were identical in nature and we are not able to distinguish between the, the four heaps and as a result, the arrangement among the four heaps has to be considered. So, we get two different answers, though it looks same, but the answers are different. Actually, factorial 4 is multiplied over here and that gives the answer of this particular question. So, this is the total number of ways by you can do both the division with 52 playing cards. So, this two examples actually demonstrates the, the case that where we are actually using the concept of division into groups. So that's all for today's class. In the next class, we'll be discussing some important problems related to permutation and combination. Thank you.